In this presentation, we will look at two-way analysis of variance with Minitab. There are several assumptions for this model. First, the samples must come from normally distributed populations. Second, the samples must be independent. Third, the samples must come from populations with equal variances. And fourth, the sample sizes must be the same. Recall in one-way analysis of variance, we could have sample sizes that were different for the various factors. Now we have three different hypotheses that we're going to look at. The first one is that the row population means are equal. And the second one is that the column population means are equal. And the third is that there is no interaction between the row and column variables. So to clarify that, you'll notice the rows I have in this data set are either paint or adhesive. So two rows. And you'll notice there are three, six, nine numbers in the first row, the paint row, and nine numbers in the second row. So one of our hypotheses will be, are the means for paint, the mean for paint, the same as the mean for adhesive? That's a test of the row means. We can also check for the columns. We have six numbers in the linoleum column. We have six numbers in the concrete one column and six numbers in the concrete two column. And we can ask ourselves, are those means all the same? That's checking the concrete factor. But the most important issue for the two-way analysis of variance is the notion of interaction. So if our hypothesis is there is no interaction between the row and column variables, we need to ask ourselves, what does that mean? And when we're talking about interaction, the simplest metaphor to consider is that of drug interaction. If a person is taking a pharmaceutical, it may help that person. It may have some side effects. If that person is taking another pharmaceutical for a different ailment, that pharmaceutical may interact with the first one to either increase the side effects or maybe decrease the effectiveness. In that case, the drugs are interacting and not performing the way they're supposed to. So that's something for us to think about in this context as well. Can we have interactions between the variables? Let's talk about degrees of freedom. We had two rows in the example we looked at. We had the paint and we had the adhesive. So we had two rows. So the degrees of freedom for the row factor in that case will be 2 minus 1. In general, m rows, degrees of freedom m minus 1. In the example we had, we had, n, we had three columns. And uh, so that would be 3 minus 1 or 2 degrees of freedom. Generally speaking, we have n columns. So the degrees of freedom for the column factor will be n minus 1. And the degrees of freedom for the interaction effect will be m minus 1 times n minus 1. So again, what exactly is interaction? And one way for us to think about this is if the lines describing the simple main effects are not parallel, then a possibility of an interaction exists. So let's take a look at a case where they are parallel. This case is going to have little interaction. We have two types of detergent, detergent A and detergent B. And we are measuring the cleanliness of some sort of a laundered shirt. So you will notice in each case, with hot water here, warm water here, and cold water here, in each case, detergent B led to a higher cleanliness score than did detergent A. You will notice the lines never intersect. You will also notice in each case, hot water gave us the best scores, warm water the scores in the middle, and cold water the scores on the bottom. Since the lines here do not intersect, we would say likely there is a little interaction. But let's extend that idea to the following graph. And I want you to imagine we have five types of detergent. Level one we'll consider as hot water here. Level 2, we will consider as warm water. And level 3, we will consider as cold water. So notice it keeps changing as to which one is the best. In the first detergent, it appears that level 3 is best. With the second detergent, it appears that level 1 is the best. In the third detergent, it appears that level 2 is the best. So it keeps changing. The lines keep intersecting that indicates that there may indeed be an interaction between the two factors that we're examining. Of course, to prove that, we're going to have to use a two-way analysis of variance to show whether or not that interaction is significant. 
So here's our question. You have been called in as a consultant to help the Pratt & Whitney plant determine the best method of applying the reflective stripe that is used to guide the automated guided vehicles along their path. There are two ways of applying the stripe, either paint or coated adhesive tape, our row factors, and three types of flooring, linoleum, one concrete, or two concrete in the facilities that use the AGVs. This question comes from the website on the bottom of the slide. Now what are we going to test? We're going to test the effectiveness of the two types of applications and we're going to test the effectiveness of the three types of flooring. In theory we could have done a one-way of NOVA for applications, we could have done a one-way in NOVA for types of flooring, but that does not get to whether or not there is an interaction between those two variables. So here's what we're going to do. We have set up two identical test tracks on each type of flooring and applied the stripe using the two methods under study. You run three replications in random order and count the number of tracking errors per 1,000 feet of track. So 1,000 feet of track and we have the results that I showed you earlier. So paint and linoleum, 10.7 errors, 10.9 errors, 11.3 errors. Adhesive and linoleum, 11.2 errors, 11.6 errors, 10.9 errors, etc. for the rest of the table. So we want to see, are the means the same for paint and adhesive? Are the means for linoleum, concrete 1, and concrete 2 the same? In other words, is there a significant row effect? Is there a significant column effect? And most importantly, in the case of the two-way ANOVA, is there an interaction? Well, before we can use Minitab to analyze this data, we need to see how to input it into Minitab. And here's what we do. The number 10.7 had a paint application with linoleum flooring. So after 10.7, we put paint in column 2 and linoleum in column 3. Similarly with 10.9, paint and linoleum. Similarly with 11.3, paint and linoleum. When we get to 10.8, that was paint in concrete 1. So each number of errors is associated with a type of application and a type of flooring. And that's how we're going to go ahead and input those numbers into Minitab. So those numbers are indeed in Minitab. Errors, application, flooring. Notice the dash T. That means it's alphanumeric so that Minitab knows how to work with that. And uh, we want to go ahead and see if indeed there is some sort of a difference for us to work with. So we're going to look at some graphs. We're going to go up to the stat menu, ANOVA for analysis of variance, and I want to see the main effects plot. What will the number of errors for paint be? What will the number of errors for linoleum be? For adhesive, for concrete one, for concrete two. So we're going to go ahead and Choose errors for our responses. And just to show you how this is going to work, for the factors, we're going to click applications and flooring. So now those are chosen. And I will say OK, and we'll take a look at our graph. So you'll notice that the adhesive had more errors than the paint. Will that be a significant difference? Or could that have been a difference that just arose by random chance? Concrete 1, 11.4. Concrete 2, 11.9. Linoleum, 11.1. Those means are all different. Are they significantly different, or could they have occurred by random chance? Now we're going to look for an interaction. So is there an interaction between the type of application and the type of flooring? Stat. ANOVA interactions plot. Again, I'm going to erase what was there before so you can see how I put it in. So we're going to move this over. Click on the response box. Error is the only one that shows up. I'm going to select errors in the response box. Click on the factor box. We'll choose application. We will choose flooring. Those are my two factors. Now I'm going to say OK. And you'll notice that these two intersect. 
In the case of concrete one, adhesive had more errors than paint. But in the case of concrete two, paint had more errors than adhesive. And in the case of linoleum, again, adhesive had more errors than paint. You will notice the lines intersect. That is typically indicative of an interaction. Will it be a significant interaction? We will see once we do the two-way analysis of variance. So we will click on STAT, ANOVA, two-way. And again, I'm going to erase what was there before when I did this earlier so that you can see how we have to input the data. So this is what you should see. Click in the response box, the only choice is error. Select, oops, try that again. Go to the row factor. In the row factor, we're gonna select application. And in the column factor, we're gonna select flooring. And that should do it for me. And then I'm gonna say, okay. And there are some graphs which we could look at and we could analyze, but I'm gonna choose not to and we're going to take a look at our output. So here's the relevant part. Application, one degree of freedom, Y. We had two types of applications, painter adhesive, two minus one, one. Flooring has two degrees of freedom, Y. Three types of flooring, linoleum, concrete one, concrete two. Three minus one is two. An interaction is the product of those two. One times two is two. That's why there's two degrees of freedom here. Now, with respect to our p-values, we get a p-value of 0.321 here for the row factor. And that, of course, is large, so we're going to say that is not significant. We have 0.003 for the p-value for the columns or the flooring, and that is significant. And then, of course, the interaction, we have 0.001, also small p-value, so that is significant. So one non-significant too significant. Let's take a closer look at what those various hypotheses tests are and what our conclusions will be. So here's the hypothesis test for the type of application. We had two types of applications, paint or adhesive. H naught mu paint equals mu adhesive versus HA mu paint does not equal mu adhesive. P-value is 0.321. We have to fail to reject H naught. So we cannot say that H naught is false, which means it's possible that the average for paint is the same as the average for adhesive. We can't be sure, but there's not enough evidence to say that they're different. Now looking at the column factor, we have the mu for linoleum equals the mu for concrete one equals the mu for concrete two. And if that's not true, we need to have at least one pair of means that are different. Well, in this case, we have a p-value of 0.003. So we reject H naught. We have evidence of at least one pair of means being significantly different. Do we know which pair are different? Is it linoleum and concrete one? Might it be concrete one versus concrete two? The only way we could answer that is with some kind of a post hoc test, which I'm going to choose not to do here. But we certainly can conclude that at least one pair of the means are different. They are not all the same. But the real interesting thing here in the two-way analysis of variance is the interaction. So our third hypothesis test is H0, there is no interaction between application type and flooring type, versus HA, there is an interaction between application type and flooring type. P-value here is 0.001, very small P-value, so we reject H0. By rejecting H0, we conclude that there is an interaction between application type and flooring type. It's a relatively strong, or so it seems, or at least there's a lot of evidence that there is some sort of interaction between those two. So that's another important thing for us to look at. And again, that's really the strength of the two-way ANOVA. And that will conclude this lesson.